Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and I am training for the Marathon de Saabs, which is six marathons in six days across the Sahara Desert. Yes, I know I'm measurably slightly crazy, but it is a big challenge, one that I have been training for for over the past 12 months now, so quite a long time in the making. It is going to be happening this week, so this Friday I will be heading out to the Sahara to go and run across the Sahara Desert. But what I wanted to do was share a few short videos with you to tell you a little bit more about my preparation, what's been involved, and this video is going to be all about feet. So my lovely toes here, which have taken pretty much a massive battering over the past few months because I've been doing so much training for them. So what I thought I'd do is I'd tell you a bit about some of my foot preparation, the socks I'm wearing, and the trainers, and what I'm doing for it. So in terms of foot preparation, I'm using a product called Knock and OK. Um, this was like really, really highly recommended to me and it's basically anti-chafing and prevents blisters. So for the past month now, I've been rubbing this into my feet every morning and every evening and just giving them a gentle massage just to help keep them really soft and really supple, which is what you want. Now, in terms of trainers, I actually ended up getting two pairs and I'll explain to you the reasons why. So the first thing I did was I actually headed down to uh, Pro Feet in Fulham and I went to see a specialist there and they checked out my running gait, they see where I applied my pressure just to see which trainer is going to suit me the best and I'd highly recommend doing something like that if you are training for a marathon or an ultra endurance race. So what happens when I run is my ankle actually collapses in on itself. So if you look on my Instagram, you can actually see, see pictures of how it sort of turns in. So I actually need a little bit more extra support sort of on the, on the inside. Now, um, with trainers, what they say about the Marathon de Sars, because you are running in the heat, there's all of these rumours flying around that you need to get trainers two or three sizes bigger than you to stop you getting blisters because your feet are going to swell and it's absolutely massive. Um, when I speak to the lady in the shop, what she said was, you do want to go slightly larger, but not so much that your feet is your feet is just like sort of flapping around inside the foot. So I ended up going about half a size larger than I would do normally. So I do have quite big feet, so I am a size eight UK, and I ended up going for an eight and a half in the trainers. Now, the reason I got two pairs of trainers, one for training in and one for the actual race. So the training, the training ones, they're both exactly the same. The training ones, I don't know if you can see on the inside. Let me see if that comes up. But basically, in the inside here, there's like a massive hole from where I have basically overtrained. Well, not overtrained, done loads of running. And if I put my my hand in there as well, I can actually feel the imprint of my foot. So all of my toes, my big toe, right down the centre to the heel. And it's been really, really, really compressed. And I've mostly done around 550, 600 miles in training. So they've taken a bit of a battering. Now, the reason why I've got a second pair, a brand new pair to wear for the actual event, is because these have taken such a battering, they're not going to provide as much support um, underneath because all of the cushioning has been compressed. Now, although I am going to be running across the Sahara Desert, it's not all going to be sand. So a lot of it's going to be very rockly, rocky, very rocky and very pebbly. And so it's all about having that extra support on your foot, those, that extra cushioning. So... I haven't actually run in these shoes yet. So I don't, obviously, I don't actually recommend that. So if you are running a marathon, make sure you wear your shoes in. But this is a slightly different race. So that's why I haven't actually trained in them. Ideally, if I could go back, I'd most probably run about 50 miles in them. But because I was over training in Australia, I didn't actually get the opportunity. I didn't take both pairs of trainers um, over with me. Now, um, so I've got my brand new pair of trainers. Now you may have noticed, can you see around the outside, I've got this sort of Velcro, which has been sewn on. And the reason that I'm doing this is because of the sand. So Raid Light make these gaiters and how you attach them to the shoe is it's got, so you've got all the opposite of the Velcro, whatever that is, is basically you attach them on. And you can just take these to any cobblers and they'll do it for you. I was a little bit scared when I took mine along. I was like, you know, how much is this gonna cost me? Um, just having no idea of the price. And so he did say, look, it's going to be really, really expensive. And I was like, oh God, how much? And so he said it was £25. And I was like, oh great, £25 for both shoes. Like, 
great, another 50 quid just burnt. But so it was 25 pound actually for both shoes. So slightly surprised, I thought that was an okay price. They've done a really, really good job. What they've done is they've actually sewn it all the way around the bits that they can sew. And then the bit at the front where it was basically, it was too solid for them to get their machine in, they've actually super glued. So what you end up doing is with your raid light, is you basically cover that onto the front of the shoe. So it gets covered onto the front and then it basically just gets attached all the way along. And that is what is going to protect your feet from running in the sand. So a lot of people, when they're doing the MDS, you'll see them wearing this and it's basically to protect from the sand. Now, I was actually really scared of the sand before I started running in it. I was over in Melbourne and I was running along on these coastal routes and I was running on the pathways all for, you know, for the first sort of couple of weeks. And I thought, right, I'm going to have to take the plunge and start running in the sand just to see what it's like. And I might as well take advantage of it. So I started running in the sand without the gaiters. So just running with my normal trainers. And to be honest, it's actually okay once you get doing it. I did have quite a lot of sand coming into my shoes. It didn't cause me any blisters, so that was really good. I was really happy about that. But it was actually quite, it was actually quite good for my running because although when you're running on the pavement or pounding the tarmac, you're, it's the same movement over and over again, that, and it's the same spots that get hit on your feet. So it's like pound, pound, pound. Whereas when you're running on sand, that you know your foot is constantly moving and constantly having to adjust so what that means is your ankles are constantly having to move and constantly having to adjust and that then affects like your calf muscles and your leg muscles so different muscles are being used so it's almost a little bit of a relief moving from a hard surface onto a sandy surface um, so totally worth doing getting some practice in the sand I actually started to preferring it I mean the other thing which was really good it slowed me down a lot and when you're doing endurance training for an ultra multi-stage um, endurance event you actually want to slow down a lot just to improve your to improve your endurance overall so it made me slow it made me run a lot slower which was fantastic now the other thing I'll talk to you about is socks so I've got two pairs of socks that I'd really recommend the first sock I'm going to recommend is the thousand mile socks, which I must have had these now for about a year and a half, maybe two years, and they have taken quite a battering, but they are absolutely fantastic. There's been hardly any wear and tear on the socks, and how it is, is basically, it's there's like no seams on it, and it's like a double lined inside, so it's incredibly soft and incredibly smooth. It's been reinforced at the heel and reinforced sort of underneath um, underneath your foot and around the toe so these socks have been absolutely fantastic so the thousand mile socks will be coming with me and then the second pair of socks are these ones which are the Balagara socks and these are just like heaven like putting your foot in it's I think it's sort of made of cotton and there's just really I don't think you can see this it's really sort of supportive and tight around your foot I quite like that sort of supportive almost compression like with a sock um, reinforced on the back of the heel they're quite low they're quite low um, they're quite low down on the ankle so they actually work really well sorry these are a bit grotty because I've been obviously running serious miles in them but they've actually withstood it really really well so um, I really like these socks so I'm taking these two pairs of socks with me so those are my top foot tips so Prepare your feet, and OK, knock. Gaiters for your trainers. You need to replace your trainers about every 500 miles. So if you are running a race, don't get brand new shoes for your race. Make sure you do wear them in. Don't do what I say, not what I, I've done in this case. But there is a method to my madness because it will help to protect my feet. And then the socks, the 1,000 mile socks are really, really awesome. And also the Balakara socks are absolutely fantastic. And that is all you need to know about feet.